Welcome to Therapy in the Great Outdoors, the podcast where we explore the business and practice of nature-based pediatric therapy of all kinds. If you're an outdoor-loving pediatric practitioner in the fields of occupational, physical, or speech therapy, social work, or mental health, this podcast will help you start and grow a successful nature-based practice or program. I am the ever honest, always 100% real, you'll hear it all on this podcast, Dr. Laura Park Figueroa. I'm a pediatric OT with over 20 years of experience, and I run a thriving nature-based practice with profitable locations in two different states and multi-six figures in revenue. I also host the free online community at therapyinthegreatoutdoors.com to help you pursue your nature-based therapy dreams too. Are you ready to take action on those dreams? Let's jump in. Welcome, everyone, back to another episode of Therapy in the Great Outdoors. I have been happy all morning. I went out to breakfast with my son, who's in town this morning, and I was telling him on the way back, I'm so excited to talk to Jenny. It feels like I'm talking to an old friend. (laughs) So Jenny Gill is here. We are going to talk all about your website and SEO, search engine optimization, because this is very important for nature-based, for any business, but for nature-based businesses especially. And Jenny and I have known each other for almost four years now, I think. She was in my first Business Bedrocks cohort that I ever did in 2020 when I was so scared to launch my first online thing and she trusted that I could like help in some way with her business. And then I recently was a client of Jenny's because I hired her to audit my nature-based practice website. So she is really an expert. I learned so much from her. And immediately after working with her and revamping my website, I was like, can you come on the podcast and share this with people more broadly? Because I think so much of what you have to share is really going to help people. So welcome, Jenny. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I am just thrilled to be here as well. (laughs) Yeah, back to 2020, it was amazing. I was just starting my business then and took that coaching program to set it up for longer term success. And I go back to the content periodically. So it's very helpful to me. So thank you for that. Yeah. And you're like, you're an OT. I didn't say that in the intro. You're an OT, but you're a copywriter now is what you do. So you actually use your writing skills and your OT brain. I bet you've worked with a lot of OT. Do you mostly primarily work with OT business owners or have you branched out from that a little bit? Yeah. So like you said, I'm an occupational therapist by training, still licensed, and I work mostly with fellow occupational therapists, although I've all the disciplines I've written for yep. and even some marketing like companies that are marketing to therapists because I understand the audience oh, interesting. So I'll write for them as well. But my specialty is definitely website copy and SEO and figuring out how to capture what we do and our values, mission, that core message and put it onto a website that still gets found in Google. Yes. Yeah. So that's the goal, right, of SEO is to get found on Google, to have yourself turn up in the search results when people are looking for your type of services when they type that into Google. So Let's okay. where should we start? I know you've worked with a lot of nature based business owners, too. So we're going to share some things. Everyone listening, we're going to share some things specific to nature based business owners, maybe throughout. But like we had that kind of as the last thing we're going to talk about. So um, there are some things that we will talk about that are specific to us, to the people listening, like the type of person that would be listening to this podcast. So but let's start with the very basics. Okay, so. What is SEO? Like that's the big, I I think that can be an intimidating question for a brand new business owner, right? It's like one of those terms we're supposed to know, but we're not really sure if we exactly know what it is. So can you give us like a primer on SEO? Yeah. I still remember when I was a therapist and I first, I was like, wait, you can influence what shows up in Google? Like it it blew my mind at first. Uh And then once you figure out how it works, it's really incredible. But the basic premise is, People type stuff into a search bar, and when they type up a search that's similar to what you provide, you want to show up. And so you have to think through in the strategy of building your website of the different factors that relate to that search engine. And so then you'll pop up. Really, the goal is on the first page of Google. I think that's super achievable for any nature-based practice Mm -hmm. or therapy practice, that you're not competing against the whole world. You're not trying to rank against 
every therapist, it's really in your community. And so there's not that many people with websites. If you do the right steps, you should show up, I think, pretty universally as long as you're not going for something crazy competitive. Yeah, that's really encouraging to think about. I hadn't thought about that. But when we think about running a nature-based practice, your, your local community is what you're focused on. And when people are searching within a certain geographical area, there's only a limited number of hits that would come up, right? For any right. yeah. business, so, much less nature-based businesses. But like any therapy business, there's a limited number of people in that area. Right. So you're going to be on that first page. Research shows that whoever's on that first page, the user does trust them. So you have yep. that inbuilt trust. They skip past a lot of those sponsored posts. Those can uh -huh. help you. But people trust whoever shows up on that first page. And so that is where most of your clicks come through. And so you want to get traffic to your website. Those are leads that you didn't necessarily have to work very hard for once you get it set up. And then once you're you're th they're there on your website, you want it to speak to them. And so it's really right. a two-part thing that, okay, you want your SEO to get people there. And then you want the right message and words on there the feel so that they'll trust you and move forward if they're the right fit once they land on that website. Yeah. So we're, and to be clear, we're not talking about anything that costs money here. It's like putting, it's literally the process to get on that first page of Google. I learned this from you. I should be letting <laughs> yeah. you, I'm trying to sound all smart here. I, no, should be letting you conversation. I learned this from you that, and it was surprising to me that I feel like this is, again, I always say I tell it like it is on this, like I tell the truth. And I'm like, you can learn from my mistakes. But I had been running my practice for when we, it was just like a couple months ago that we revamped my website. And granted, like while I was doing my PhD, I was like, whatever, the website is what it is. I know it's a mess. Like I'm not going to deal with it right now. <laughs> for five years, it was a mess. But when I hired you to audit it and give me suggestions for it, there were so many things that I was really surprised at. And I was like, I've been running this business for eight years and I did not know these things. It's amazing how simple it is to do, but like you can run a business for a long time and just it can be like, uh, like you're just ignoring it, but you don't know what an impact it's having on your business. And so one of the things I learned from you was that the words that you have on the actual headings on the content of your website really matter. And one, I was surprised because one of the things you told me that was counterintuitive to how I think about a website is that you actually need to repeat the words like Madison, Wisconsin, Oakland, California. I needed to have those words consistently throughout my website so that it was like popping up for those like geographical locations or whatever. And also the words occupational therapy and nature based and outdoor and all these words that I had tried to really trim down the words on the website and you were like, no, you need to have these headings. You need to have the subheadings like they all need to be filled with all those keywords because Google's crawling it looking for clues as to whether it should put it in front of people when they're searching for occupational therapy, Madison, Wisconsin, whatever. So let's talk about that. Talk yeah. to us about like, where do you start? I know where you started with me and y'all. If you need help with this, you need to hire Jenny. I'm just going to straight give her a shout out because truly like her prices for her services pay off so much in the long run. I don't care. I'm not going to say how much she charges because she should raise her rates in the future. <laughs> so, but whatever you pay to invest in optimizing your website pays off in dividends later on because people find you. It's like such a good investment in your business. So the reason I said that is that I don't think we're going to be able to go into the entire audit that you do on a website here. So if you need extra help with this, everyone, you should hire Jenny to help you. But let's talk about the basics for people. Like where should people start if they want to try to show up on that first page of Google? What are your top tips for checking? What are the things to check on your website? Yeah, I think it's helpful to think it's so simple. Like you said, it's like a combination lock. Once you know the combination, it's really easy to open. Hmm. And SEO is a lot the same way. Like if you could try a, a whole bunch of different things, but unless you get those right numbers or in the, the right keywords yeah. in the right spot, that's when it just unlocks and you your website pops up. So for nature-based practices, I would say location is probably the number one thing. And that's what people miss the most often. And if you think of the internet, it's huge, right? Yeah. 
and you're not competing against the rest of the internet. You don't want people from just anywhere. You want them from your location. And so the only way that Google knows where your website belongs in the whole world <laughs> is for you to put that location on there a lot. And you put it in the headings, in the subheadings specifically, and you can put it other places as well, but you want to repeat it. And it feels really repetitive and you're, <laughs> everybody just wants to delete it. Like that doesn't belong. Right. But it gives context. And if you think of it also from the user, because it's always about Google and the user, mm -hmm. the user also wants to know where you are in the world. Like how important is location probably to your user? It, it, that is a yeah. factor in their decision. Yeah. And they don't know where your practice is because you drive there right. every day, but they don't always know. And so you want to repeat it in there and you can use a variety of user terms to think of different ways that people would think about your location. Is it mm. a city? And then is it a geographic region? So like I could say I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I could say Grand Rapids pediatric practice. Or I could say a West Michigan pediatric practice. Both okay. of those would make sense to my user and would be different variations of what they could type into that search bar. Okay, that's great advice. And then from there, as far as keywords, it's your services for these core pages on your website. So you're in, I don't see a ton of people actively searching for outdoor and nature necessarily. Right. Totally. Um, it's not yeah, a thing but, yet. Like people don't even know when they see it. My, in my experience, parents are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, but they're not typing in. And this is the important thing about SEO. You have to get in the brain of your ideal client of what are they typing into Google? Like totally, they're probably not typing in therapist certified in sensory integration or something like they're typing in OT for kids, Madison or something. They're yeah, like, yeah. what are they typing in? And they're not going to be typing in nature-based occupational therapy because they don't even know it exists. <laughs> they don't know it exists. Right. So it's each service. So if you're multidisciplinary, you're going to do a page for PT in Madison, Wisconsin. Right. OT right. in Madison, Wisconsin. Speech therapy in Madison, Wisconsin. Things like that would be the keyword for each page because each page on your website can rank in Google. And so you want to add in some strategy to rank for different pages or different location. If yeah. you meet at different parks, maybe you do a page per park. Or if you have groups, you do a group page and think about what people are Googling for yeah. that specific service. So yeah, that's where I start is very basic on the core pages. Of, I want this website to show up in a location for a service. Right. And that's what you helped me do on my website. Because I the reason I came to you is because I was like, it's a mess. Because we started the Madison location now. So now it's really confusing. to. It's not anymore now that I've organized it according to what you told me to do. But, but it was prior to working with you, very confusing to families because we didn't have it set up well to when you land on the website to go, are you in California? Are you in Wisconsin? Click here for Wisconsin groups. Click here for California groups. It was just very, we offer groups in both locations and it was all on one page and it was really confusing to everyone. And again, it was another thing. To me, I felt like the less pages, the better, the less. And you were like, no, you need like separate pages for people. And so now we have California individual, California groups, Wisconsin groups, Wisconsin summer camp, California summer camp. They're all separate buttons so that when people land on that first page, they go to all of those different pages, depending on what services they want. I wish I had looked up data before this call because I'm sure that we, well, I know we're ranking on Google now. You were saying like, you're not even on the first page of Google, Laura. And I'm like, what? I've been running this practice for eight years, you know? I looked up oh. some, <laughs> some data actually. Right. So yeah, you rank in Google now. And I just looked at a general overview of your traffic and you can see that your traffic went up on your website. Oh, good. Since this fall. It takes a while. That's what, Another thing that people find really interesting, SEO takes a while to work. Yeah. So History. you make the changes and then it will slowly build over time. So if you launch a new website or make updates, yeah. you can ask Google to recrawl it, but it, it takes a while for the changes to really kick in for results. Mm -hmm. For it, It's like history of searches and all of that need to be there in order to rank it. Yeah. Okay. So so the other thing you just mentioned, the 
the thing that I was surprised by too was those headings. The heading ones on your website, like the main headings on your website are really important to load with those SEO keywords, right? Is that right. accurate? Yeah. So this is where like the the real strategy of a website comes in because you're trying to balance getting some SEO keywords in there, but also it's the user and we know that we have five seconds for them to know what you do right. and feel intrigued to read the rest. So you, it's a balance there. Strategically weave them in, but you have a heading one at the top. You get one of those per page. And that is the most, it's like a computer code inside those words when you add that heading one setting that then Google knows, oh, that's the most important words on this entire page. And so okay. the words that you put there highly influence your rankings. And then from there you have heading two. So those are your subheadings. Those are scattered throughout. And I think of it like blocks. Right. So it's going to introduce that block, that idea. Mm -hmm. Again, if you can get keywords in there, it's great. And then underneath there, you're just going to have your regular text. Fill it in so that people can scan. So they're going to read those subheadings first with the keywords in and then read the text underneath if it matters to them. So okay. it's, that's how you just start build it. And usually I write a page and I'm trying to get maybe the keyword in the top, either the heading one or heading two, and then a couple times in the subheading. Again, okay. never compromising user experience. So I still want it to make sense. I don't want it to feel like stuff, like stuffing right. those headings, like the keyword in there, but just make it natural. And so yeah, whatever I can do to weave it in. Like you wouldn't put, is this an example of what you mean? Like you wouldn't put a heading two that says something like, Occupational therapy for children with autism, ADHD, sensory processing disorder, dyspraxia. You wouldn't yeah. list out all of that in a heading, no. right? Like that, because no. that would not, that would impact the user experience. It would be like off putting, right? But what you did tell me on my page is to have, like, we work with children who have diagnoses such as, and like a list of the diagnoses. Cause I, again, I had pulled that off the website thinking, oh, that's like, too much words and it's too confusing for people. And you're like, no, people need to see that. They need to know if my child kind of fits into one of these categories. And you can always say, and children with other developmental delays or whatever. But those diagnostic criteria also tell Google and tell people because if someone searches OT for child with autism or some autistic child, whatever, into Google, then that's communicating to Google that you have that experience in your practice or whatever. So I was surprised by that too. It's like, the things that I changed, I was just like, gosh, I did not even anticipate this. So let's talk about images. Do you have anything to say about images? I'm not sure. I don't remember what we did with images on my website. I know I needed more Wisconsin images, which I added because they all looked like California. And that was pretty confusing. <laughs> Emily's like redwood trees. We don't have those in Wisconsin. Where's the oaks and the pines? So what do you think about images? I think. Images, you always start with the copy and the strategy first, and then the images okay. should back that up. I think we have a lot of opportunity with our websites to prepare our clients ahead of time to really think about they're coming into a space they might be unfamiliar with. The more we learn about neurodiverse needs and image yep. processors and feeling safe and preparing, I think we can do a lot that communicates through our images. And part of a website is to get somebody to envision working with you through the words, hmm. and they can envision that outcome at the end. And I think the images, especially for nature-based, can do a lot of that work for us. So you could talk about messy play, but when you see a kid smiling and have that joy of messy play, mm -hmm. as a parent, I can activate that part of my brain that's, oh yeah, that is what I want for my child. Yeah. And then even beyond that, just like for like private practices, I love having an image of the front of the building or for nature okay. base. Like where do you get dropped off? And all of those are clues that help our clients feel supported before they step foot in our practice. And then beyond that, just like expertise. If they can see who they're going to work with. So headshots of your team or of you so that they can get a sense of who they're working with. Again, that creates safety. And mm. the data shows about pages are the second most visited page on a website. 
It's because people want to know trust who they're going to go see. And so we keep that in mind. If this is what matters to our clients, let's create a website that fits their needs. Because whether you hear it or not, I think a lot of potential and new clients are going to visit your website either before they book you or before they show up just to prepare themselves. And so let's meet them in that spot and just do a great job from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good, I hadn't thought about that before. And maybe you talked to me a little bit about this, but it's showing how you sharing that is showing how your skills as an OT kind of merge with your ability to help people with their websites and SEO, because I hadn't ever really thought about a parent using our website as a conduit to help their child feel safe to come to our sessions, right? So like that, I might add that into our welcome packet, actually, of go to our website, find your therapist on the about page, show your child a picture of the therapist, like getting them ready for the, I need to take, I need to take notes here. <laughs> I need to write this down before I forget it. I guess I'll listen to it when I edit it. But yeah, there you yeah that's just a, that's just a brilliant way to describe. And I think also will help therapists who are like helping professionals. I think a lot of times we put off working on the website because it feels kind of secondary to the true work we do with the kids, right? Like the true work we're doing with families and like really supporting families and children. And the way you stated that makes it like, no, your website can actually be a conduit to support families and children. I just love it. I just got goosebumps. It's such a great, it's such a great concept, really. So the images should support the words. I like what you said about start with the copy, the writing on your website, which we never, I don't think really defined what copy was, but copy oh, is yeah. any words that you use to market your business. Everyone, that's what a copywriter is. They write marketing content, basically. Basically the words on the internet. We write right. the words on the internet. Yeah, right, right. So you start with the copy, you start with writing out the words that need to be on your website, and then you select the photos and images that go along with those words. Is there any benefit to using video? I could see a welcome video being on a website, but is there any SEO benefit to that? Or what do you think there? So Google itself can crawl videos or images. Interesting. So they can crawl any of the alt text that you add. So images, I always add the alt text describing the image. Yes. And potentially try to get a keyword in there. So that's how you end up on the Google image search. If anybody <laughs> wondered, you know, the, you go to Google okay. images, it's based yep. on the alt text. So the alt people... text, let's define for people what that is in case. I just don't want to assume people know what these yeah, things so are. Yeah, so if you're uploading an image into your website, you have the opportunity to fill in. There'll be a box there that's alt text. It's really for accessibility. So mm -hmm. visually impaired people can understand what your text is. But that is what Google pulls from to create the image search in Google. So if you cool. put your keywords in there, you can get people who are searching for images and then land on your website to that as well. That's great. But, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. But overall, Google does not necessarily crawl through your videos or your images. So you have to keep that in mind. Like it, Google only really reads words. But from a user standpoint, having videos and interactive elements on your website can be a good thing if that's how mm -hmm. they want to engage in your content. Keeps them there longer. So the longer your people stay on your website, that also helps your SEO. So from that standpoint, it can help as well. Yep. Good. Good advice. What else? Is there anything else that you wanted to share or anything specific to, I know you've worked with several nature-based practices. Is there anything else specific to nature-based practices that you wanted to share that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think it's, I, I started my business with, I'm going to write for therapy people. And I ended mm -hmm. up with quite a few nature-based clients, which has been really fun. It's a fun group to work with. And I was reflecting on, oh, why is this? <laughs> and but I think we're the best. That's why. Yeah, I was going to say but it's because truly. we have this I pinch community. myself. I get off of business coaching calls with my business coaching program. And it's all nature-based therapists. And every Tuesday afternoon, I am so happy because I just, they are the best. I don't know what it is. It's like they're, they love the outdoors. They're supportive. They're, they're just, it's just the best group of people. I just, I love you all. Anyway, so <laughs> go on. We're great people. I just said. You're great people. That. Yeah. 
And that's what it came down to. I was like, it's a great community. So I think really mm-hmm. great at sharing re- resources and referrals. And my, they get a good service. They're likely to pass on the name. And then it's like the same thing I tell my clients, values. I'm not a nature-based therapist myself, but I think there's a lot of overlapping values of loving. I love to be outside. I think nature-based therapists are a little bit like... They're super nice, but they want to do it their own way, which is me too. I'm like celebration. Yeah, let's get out of the the regular system and do things differently. Yeah. And then from like a marketing standpoint, I think first off, what's unique is you don't have a brick and mortar place that people pass by in their cars. You don't have signage for your marketing mm-hmm. that people pass by and can see. And so the ne- the next step, I think, is thinking, okay, what are what do I have? And a lot of it does come back to a website that people can find online as a marketing strategy. Yeah. I think the great opportunity with nature-based therapists is like it's unique, right? And Mm -hmm. so that can be really difficult to describe initially, which is why people hire me to help them describe it. But once you do describe it, being unique is really great for marketing because people can instantly figure out what sets you apart, they, like I said, those images of outdoor play for kids or adults, people get that. I think when they feel those feelings, it's an easier sell. Hmm. The challenge, which we touched on, is people don't know what it is, so they're not necessarily searching for it. Right. And the other challenge is just, what was I going to say? Oh, that you have to remember to sell the outcome. It's really easy to start talking about how great nature-based therapy is. But all of marketing always comes down to that outcome. So remember to sell the outcome that they're going to get from the work with you, not therapy itself, not being outdoors itself. Great So you can use the outdoors as what makes you unique and distinct and a reason people would select you, but never lose sight of the fact that they are signing up and paying money for therapy for an outcome. And so if you can yeah. balance both of those things, you have a really great marketing campaign. Yeah, that's a really good word because I find it so hard to I've talked we talk about this a lot in my business coaching program when we work through the marketing stuff in the business bedrocks curriculum, because I think a lot of times what we see online as business owners is marketing advice that is geared towards something that is like a product or a specific outcome, like you will lose 10 pounds or whatever, like just these very clear outcomes. And so much of the work that we do with children is not, yes, we write goals and we need to be very clear about the goals we're working on and make sure that we're communicating that progress to families to demonstrate the value of our services. That's what I'm always saying. But it's very hard in the marketing on your website because there's this delicate balance between wanting to accept children as they are, right? And know that they are like these awesome little humans just as they are, like as they're growing up and struggling through all of the developmental stages and all that. And also communicating the message that like, yeah, when a kid is struggling, it's hard and we want to help them change. We want to help them get better. But the outcomes are often so not these like black and white, really clear to show kind of things. So it can be really challenging to write that copy on a website for a therapy practice because there's this just fine. It's a dance. It's like a very fine line to to communicate in your marketing. So it's just a challenge I've had. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Hey, got advice, Jenny? No, I can just recognize that challenge because that is the core challenge of really my work. And so I feel that on a super common basis. And I think the thing that I keep coming back to is give accurate outcomes, give ideas. It's a list. We are diverse, multi-passionate, multi-talented professionals. And honoring that is okay. Not everybody can narrow down to one one ideal client. And finding ways to work around that And more and more, I lean into what is your mission? What is your values? What are your belief statements? And really attract clients around those things. And that can buffer against some of the ambiguity in other areas. Like I'm not, I'm not going to change the fact that therapists 
do a whole bunch of really amazing things and it's not always clear. Let's work on the areas that can make a difference. And so that's yeah. what I've landed on in this journey yeah. of a couple of years of copywriting and trying to think through how do we solve this? Yeah, it's it's a talent to be able to do that. It hurts your brain to do it. And it does. <laughs> and you're skilled at it. It's good. It's like, I think business owners, a lot of times, I love copywriting, but if it is not something that you as a business owner feel comfortable doing, it is 100% worth whatever money you're going to spend on it because it's your image. So it's your brand and your image and your relationship building with your ideal customers and your community. And so- 100% worth it to outsource that piece if it's not something that you love to do. And I, even as someone who loves copywriting, I have hired copywriters in my business because I think sometimes what I have found, especially with some of my sales pages and things, like I, I've i seen them for years. Like I, I tweak them and I go back and change things, but it's almost like you can't see it anymore if you've spent so much time looking at it. We all do this. Like on our when we write something, for our websites, you you literally can't read it anymore if you've gone over it a million times, right? So it's always helpful to get those outside eyes and have someone tell you, like, this is not working here, like you did yeah. my website. It's totally true. Even copywriters will say that. They'll hire each other to write their own stuff. Yeah. One of my, the phrases that really made the light bulb go off for me is like the phrase, you can't read the message from inside the bottle because like your point of view is just yeah, you're too close. You can't read that label from that from inside the bottle. And I think that's true for every I think it's a universal truth at this yes. point. I love it. That's hilarious that copywriters hire copywriters. They do. I never they, thought that, but I'm sure they do they because do. they value it. Right. Yeah. OK, let's tell people where they can find you and learn more about your services. Yeah. So they can visit my website, JennyGillCopywriting.com. That's where I list my services and you can book a call. I am pretty active on Instagram. My handle is JennyGill underscore OT. And I have a freebie out there that's hooks, headlines, and subject lines that can help you start to brainstorm some of those headlines for the top of your website pages. Yes, we have it in the show notes. I have it all ready to go. So I'm very Yay. excited about that freebie that you're offering because that is, I think sometimes we just need like things to help us start the creative process, right? Yes. Help us start thinking of things. Like I just made a new freebie too called the free big huge list of 120 nature-based pediatric therapy activities <laughs> because because it's just, and it's just a list. It's not like you need these supplies and you need this and do this. And then this is step one. It's none of that. It's just literally a list of 120 activities in a bunch of different areas. But I, same thing, like I just wanted to kind of help people have a quick to skim list that would help then maybe make them think about creative ways they could take that activity and do their own thing with it. So similar thing with writing, like when you have a cheat sheet for headlines and things like that, it helps you stimulate your own creativity and thinking about your business and maybe helps you get some of those things done on your website that you're putting off. So, <laughs> yes. right. Thank you so much, Jenny, for being here. I, this was such a value loaded episode. I actually can't wait to go back and edit it and write the show notes for it because I have some things I need to take action on from this episode. So I appreciate you so much. And I just, I love knowing you. I love, I have loved watching your business grow the last four years. And yeah, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for letting me be here and talk one of my favorite topics, which is SEO and websites. Not everybody wants to talk about it with me. So thank you. Oh, I love it. I love it. See you soon. Wait a second. Don't go yet. Do you want 120 ways that you can take your pediatric therapy work outdoors into nature? I wrote the free, big, huge list of nature-based therapy activities just for you. 
The Big Huge List will give you quick ideas for nature-based sessions. In the Big Huge List, there are activities for gross motor, fine motor, visual perceptual, executive function, balance, group collaboration and team building, social, emotional, and self-regulation skills, as well as speech and language, and a whole section just for swing activities. So go on and get your free Big Huge List so you can get started taking kids outdoors or have some new ideas if you've been doing this a while. You can download your free copy at Therapy and the great outdoors.com slash list. So until next time, get outside, connect, reflect, and enjoy therapy in the great outdoors.